everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Matt. Uh, today I'd like to share my experience with you um, on operating ER and CR transceivers in three areas. I'm not talking about, I'm not going to talk about link and so forth, which I have already uh, in my previous uh, talk. Today, mainly I I'm focusing on uh, APD damage. Uh, why? The first area is why to use APD based detection in uh, receiver nowadays. Second area is what type of failure usually is encountered. And third, what can we do about it? So, to start with, I'll just throw out something the next. And, you know, the, confirm the necessity of using APD. So APD become part of our uh, tools in designing uh, fiber optic links. Basically, uh, due to the, 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 the allowable transmission distance is inversely proportional to the data rate square. So I plugged it out uh, with the graph on the right side a typical, very typical fiber and very typical laser characteristics. Uh, the, the blue line is 10G signal and the red line is 25G and I see both analysis. So, so for a usual very standard type of uh, spectral width, which is 0.2 to maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.2, let us say 0.2, you can see the the link can of uh, of the 25G is like a 30, 20 to 30 kilometer, maybe 40 with the FEC. So you look at the standard, this is from the standard and you can see ER4 lines and ER4, 30 kilometer and 40 kilometers are roughly the same thing. So, uh, so here comes the 25G APD. <laughs> so I just want to uh, set the stage so we can talk about the APD. And I, I throw some parameters, which I just grabbed it from the pretty recent paper uh, about uh, 25G APD. Uh, the, you can see some very typical parameter like uh, the reverse bus voltage is roughly from 17 volts to 21 volts. The 3 dB bandwidth is uh, roughly 20 gigahertz. The um, um, multiplication factor, which is M, we call it, is roughly for this particular uh, APD is 2 at uh, 17 volts and 5 at minus 21 volts. And you can achieve the sensitivity like minus 17 dBm for 10 to the minus 12, very typical. So I just use one graph to, to lay out the fundamental of the APD, which most of you know already. And compare it with the pin uh, photo dial, uh, APD has gain and very simply said, the APD has the absorption region A and, uh, and then multiplication region M. So when a light strikes the surface of the APD and uh, the holes and electrons are generated in this region and the carriers are being swept to the M region, if you apply a voltage here, so you can see uh, the, that's where the photo current gain takes place is right here. And usually the M is uh, like a, from 10 to 40 for indium gallium arsenide uh, APDs. At least our very simple equation, the signal current is equal to the M. Again, M is in between 10 to 40 roughly for the APD we use. Times the responsivity of the APD at the operating wavelength times the power input. Very roughly basic equation. You can see once the 
uh, reverse bias voltage start to increase and the gain the gain start to increase the hair is like a one you know equalized to one and then as you go forward it, all the way to this region and the hairs what we call breakdown so i want to point out several things on this graph so usually we bias hair somewhere here you can see to get the maximum amount of current but the problem is this curve over temperature it changes a lot so all the apt designer they have to track the, uh, the temperature to compensate for this shift so so you can see uh if if the temperature compensation is no good the, the apt would just go into breakdown just you know yeah can become useless okay so uh here i'm going to come back to this pink curve later on in, uh, yeah in the other graph so the most frequent failure encountered by uh by the user is apd damaged most of the return for er and cr uh, are due to the apd damaged what happened and which is yeah, it's this the maximum because the maximum input power of the receiver is not observed i mean observed that means that rule has to be followed you cannot put in uh, the maximum power beyond what is specified in the data sheet and usually the user don't quite pay attention because they, they get used to the pin and once they get together ABD, uh, they, they, they forget about the whole thing. So uh, this threshold is called damage threshold. It's usually minus three dBm to minus seven dBm. Minus seven dBm being very standard. Sometimes nowadays I see minus three dBm. The most uh, likely scenario of this damage is the user. They connect the transmitter directly to the receiver with the very short fiber back to back when this happened the absorption layer is damaged which leads to a short to the circuit ground i will show you later on what, what that means and which will cause the ma maximum current flow and so in order to replace the apd transceiver which is not cheap right it's roughly like a four times lr for 100 ger is like a four times LR cost and it's still higher for uh, the CR which is about 10 times LR so it can be pretty costly and here I want to throw out an example see how the process is laid out to troubleshoot this APD damage in a standard QA environment and here we receive two part number with the same type of failure they go through the QA test first right for uh, RMA so everything are fine on the especially on the transmitter side but everything from the receiver side fail sensitivity fail overload fail and also the DDMI on the receiver power input fail those three combined together can tell you is almost certain is APD damage because when you change the input power, this number remain the same. And the next step of the, this process is troubleshooting, right? The, the QA people start to troubleshoot. First of all, they would measure the voltage, the bus voltage at the cathode of the APD, which is like what you remember in the previous graph is roughly like a uh, you know 30 volts roughly you know so so when you measure way low below 30 volts something is wrong so uh because all you can see because all um high voltage conversion the current source uh, is limited when the when the current draws 
more, and the voltage drops, start to drop. So that's why the voltage becomes very low. And then immediately, you will measure the resistance from this point of the ground, which becomes small. And for normal APD is in the mega ohm range in the DC measurement. So the, the, the thing to, the third step will be replace the APD Rosa, uh, Rosa to see, to confirm this failure. And then yes, if the Rosa works again, that means the previous uh, Rosa on the PCB is damaged. So here shows, here's the normal, the blue line is the normal uh, current to voltage curve. But you can see anytime you test it, it becomes like this because the current start to drain a lot more it becomes, you know, like a, without, even without bias, you see current. So that's a very typical APD damage characteristic. And one step further, and you try to delete this APD ROSA, right? you open it, and you can see inside it's like the hair is the APD chip. So under uh, high man magnification, like a hair we use uh, a thousand times, you can see the area. And you, if you look carefully, there are two little scratches. It looks like a scratches on the surface. It's exactly what we call optical damage. It's, it's a hint that this chip has been damaged. So the next step is to cross-section, to remove the chip, the cross-section, uh, to find out the actual damage. And I show you here with a picture. And when you cross-section, and there is a, you can see the damage in the absorption layer. Absorption layer, you remember, is very close to the magnification we call a multiplication layer. So it's right here, which the damage occur. So what to do about it? The last one I want to talk about is what to do about it. And the first, I summarize in three points. First, uh, the APD has to have a very good current protection circuitry. This is for designer. And but you say you you are the end user, but you can push them, right? You can ask them how how the APD is designed, uh, if it happens often. And usually there is a current monitor here to to control the amount of current. And here is the APD cathode. You can see is if you measure normally, it's about thirty volts here to ground. And the current source is very important because it has to control the current dynamically. I emphasize this word dynamically because it has to be very fast. When the light strikes the chip, the current ha has to be shut off immediately without leaking any glitch. Otherwise, it would just in a fraction of seconds, it would just damage the chip. It has to be very fast. And then the second one is that uh, the APD chip has to be, the design of the APD chip has to be robust. Nowadays, I see the damage, damaging threshold increase to plus 4 dBm. And actually, this, this is like a spec putting uh, a, 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 a transceiver, which is the highest I've seen. But on the other side, you can see for a 10 G E R transmitter, each link can be as high as, as plus six dBm, each link that is. So you can see by doing back to back transmitter receiver, you damage the, the APD immediately. Sometimes the, the damage can be, uh, uh, late, uh, can be uh, latent and that which means uh, it would not happen immediately. It will happen later on. So uh, yeah, so that's the danger. And the third point I put it out here, I use bow letter is that uh, when you deal with APD uh, receiver, you always use a inline attenuation in front of the ROSA. 
I think 10 dB uh, in line attenuation in front of the rosa is very safe. This is the most inexpensive and most reliable solution for the user. And uh, it's, yes, it's inconvenience, but uh, I think as a good practice, you, can, you, you should use that. And here is the end of my talk, and I, I'm looking forward to your question. So here's a question. I'm going to read that out loud. What is the relationship in between the temperature and gain? Is that exponential or linear? And it just moves the C4, it just moves the curve to the high side uh, as, as usual. So the, the slope of the curve will change also. And uh, the other question is how I would like to know how does the bias value change if the temperature increase or decrease? Yeah, so, um, so when the temperature start to increase, you not to pump up the, 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 the voltage is gonna decrease. You're going to jack up the voltage. So you, and uh, which means uh, you might run into some marginal issue on your design. So, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's an area the APD receiver designer has to pay a maximum attention on to track this uh, temperature variation. I remember many years ago, I designed a very high sensitivity APD receiver, uh, which I need to achieve the maximum amount of uh, sensitivity at quantum limits. And I need to put a, a TEC, a, a thermal electric controller around the receiver to keep it at the same temperature. So that critical. So good APD receiver has to be temperature control. There's no doubt about it. So are there any questions? Yeah. Okay. So any, any specific optical uh, alternator you recommend? Yes. So it depends on the inline alternator, right? So if the alternate, uh, if the inline con connector is LC, right? You do an LC. But those LC, I, I do not like those LC inline alternator because the, the split sleeve inside this alternator is it's very easy to get damaged. As you poke through the ferrule through this uh, split sleeve, sometimes you push it and just crack it. And uh, I hope in the future, they come up with better, better design solution. But right now, uh, I think this is the cheap solution, right? Like, uh, I don't remember, it's like uh, maybe $10, $15, you can get a pretty good uh, quality, uh, quantity, uh, quality uh, in line alternator LC, um, like, fi like 10, 15 bucks probably for 10 dB alternator. The third question would be uh, uh, 100 GER or CR transceiver currently use APD. If they are, uh, then how do they handle the damage protection? Okay. Uh, for ER, uh, C CR definitely, they use APD. For ER, it's a, a small portion of the uh, receiver, ER receiver, still using pin. The way for them to get, get around the long uh, distance length is to jack up the transmitter power, right? So you can see the link is like the difference in between transmitter power and receiver sensitivity. So they went the other way around. So they increased the power and keep the pin detector. So with this type of ER receiver, usually the sensitivity is very marginal to the spec. So you don't have much room, like very close. So I, I, I saw some of those transceiver around, but, uh, but for, 
but but for uh, now 100G and 400G, uh, I don't see I don't see pin detector anymore. Yeah. How do they handle the damage protection? One is to use uh, the the more robust design of the APD. So the threshold of the APD increased. And secondly, they uh, they do a very good job on the current monitor, right? So with the all sort of consideration put in, with a very fast uh, turn, uh, speed uh, to shut off the, uh, the current when the high power is sensed. And also maybe they do something on the on the yeah on the on the layer so that the preservation layer uh to to reduce the intensity yeah for a high input so here is here are all the questions and uh this I, yeah like one okay. more question I think. yeah uh, if you can hear me. So this one says, how much APD voltage changes across temperature? Like minus 40 to plus 85 degrees. Oh, can about, quantify about roughly. Three, maybe three to five volts, probably. Yeah. It cannot be much higher, right? Because you can see the, the voltage required on this is like uh, in between 30 to 35 volts, right? You, because you need some margins, right? So uh, I think for the max, I can see it's 40 volts for a uh, voltage converter in something like that used in the transceiver. So I think it's roughly five volts-ish, yeah. For the amount of current that is needed, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right, Eric, thanks uh, for the very useful information. And thanks everyone for joining.